Hi, and welcome to Nextex Entertainment. My name is Jonathan, and I'll be your host for this Blender tutorial series. In this first episode, I'll be going over Blender's interface. I won't be going into the functions, tools, or settings. I'll be sticking strictly to Blender's interface. Now, understanding how to use or how to navigate through Blender's interface is essential in learning how to use Blender efficiently. Now, as you can see, I'm using Blender 2.79, which is currently the latest version available, or at least the latest stable version. So when you first start Blender, this is typically what you should see. This little window here is the splash window. In it, we have some basic elements, such as links to some of the Blender-related websites. Also, we have the recent files list, which normally, if you've started Blender for the first time, this area should be blank. And then we have this interaction drop down right here, which determines which shortcuts Blender will be working with. Now, in this case, we have Blender's default um, shortcuts, 3D Studio Max, custom keys, and even Maya. In other words, you can choose the keyboard shortcut layout from the get-go on this splash screen. Also, you can enable and disable the splash screen by default at startup. All right, now let's eliminate the splash screen by clicking anywhere outside of it. Now, when starting a Blender, it usually starts with a default layout or a default screen layout. And this is the 3D viewport. Now, how do I identify which editor that we're currently using? Because each of these windows, this window, this, this is a different window, and this window, how do we identify which editor that these windows are using, what they are, or how to modify them? I'm going to start by collapsing this menu, which is a side menu. To collapse it, I'm going to place the cursor at the edge of it, click and hold down the mouse button, and I'm going to drag it to the left until it collapsed. Now, you'll notice that as it collapsed, a little plus sign showed up at the top here. There is also one here on the right. These plus signs indicate hidden menus, or rather collapsed menus. As you can see, if you click on it, they open up. Now to collapse them, simply click and drag the edge back in and it will collapse. Alright then, now how do you identify which editor that we're currently using? At the left side of every tools panel, which is this panel right here, you can see that each editor has its own panel. This one has its panel, this has a panel. Now if you're wondering, this panel right here is for the 3D viewer and this top one here is actually its own window. So it's not just a panel, it's its own window or rather its own editor. So. To identify which editor we're using, we simply have to hover the mouse over this icon, this lower left icon. It is typically at the left of all tools panel. So as we can see, this says that this editor is 3D view or 3D viewport. Now by clicking on it, we get this drop down menu. And this drop down menu, we can select which editor that we would like to use in this window or in this segment of the interface. Now this video series will be focusing on how to use Blender as a video editor. But before we can get started in learning how to use Blender, we first need to understand the interface. Once you understand how the interface works, that's it. You understand. This is how it works all over. So. This is the 3D space. We know so because it says it on the little icon down at the left. Now, in order to create a new window, all we have to do is click and drag one of these two handles, which every window has. Every editor window has two of these little handles, one at the top right and one at the lower left. Now, to create new windows, you simply click and hold down the mouse button and drag it back in on the editor window. Now, in order to collapse an editor window, drag out this handle over to this other window. There should be an arrow pointing towards the window that will collapse as such. Now, in order to collapse two windows, they must be equal in length on the collapsing sides. Now, what I mean by that is if I split this top window into two, I can no longer collapse either one of these two small windows with this bigger one or this bigger one with either one of these two small windows. See if I drag it up, nothing will happen. I can also use this lower handle to drag it up and drag it to the opposite side or rather towards the editor. Now, if you'd like to collapse this top window over this lower window, 
but it so happened that you grabbed the lower windows handle and dragged it up well if you're still holding down the mouse button you can simply place your cursor over the lower window and the arrow should switch direction and when you release the upper window will collapse on the lower window to illustrate this function whichever window collapsed the other its editor takes over so all windows can be dragged out and stretched to whichever length that you'd like to have them now up here slightly to the left we have a panel that says default now this is the default window which is typically the 3d viewer and is what blender starts with there's also a drop down menu and this drop down menu gives you access to different layouts that have been pre-constructed to be optimal for the function that their title indicate for example motion tracking this layout is supposedly optimal for motion tracking we also have a scripting layout and as we can see it is different and it makes use of different editors it is the same windows placed in different areas or disposed differently and then you change the editor types so if we change it over to video editing as you can see there's already a video editing layout and if you've used other video editing software you would typically see the same elements in them such as a monitor you'd have a properties window for the strips timeline or rather in blender this is the sequencer and down here we have the timeline now if we go back to the default layout you'll notice that it the changes that I made to it are still there I can delete these changes or I can save them and have them available to me next time that I start a blender all right now as you can see this also has a side panel which you can collapse just like in the 3d viewer now this here you can't collapse because it's not a side panel but rather two windows as you can see we have the outliner the properties window up here we have the info this is the nodes editor that I changed this into down here we have the 3d view and this is the timeline so as you can see we can move the windows around and change their editor types and you can save these changes into presets or you know layouts that you'll have available to you next time you start a blender now next to the layouts drop down we also have this other drop down which is not the same as the layouts this is actually the scenes panel which allows you to break your project in different scenes in a way or different compartments or sections I won't be getting into it but just to let you know that this is not the same as the layout and this is something you won't really be using unless it's a heavier project now next to it we also have another drop down which controls which windering mode that blender will be using now I won't be getting too much into this but this controls your render engine in the meantime this is on blender render and I would recommend leaving it on blender render since we'll be using blender as a video editor so let me collapse the stop one now there are a few general rules in blender or rather universal keyboard shortcuts keyboard shortcuts that apply in just about any editor or all editors so as we had seen earlier we have a left and right panel in this 3d viewport so you can access these panels by using the keyboard shortcuts T for the left and N for the right now of course you can change the keyboard shortcuts later in the settings but the reason why I wanted to show you these two is because these are universal now if we change over to the, to the video editing layout this is the graph editor now with the mouse hovering over the graph editor if I hit the N key because as you can see there's a little plus sign up here the menu pops out so the N and T keys are universal or rather general keyboard shortcuts when it comes to the side panels in Blender not all editors have the side panels available some of them actually only have the right panel and some of them have no panels but for all of those that do have panels the N and T keys have the same function they open up the side panels now it is important to note that in Blender the mouse cursor indicates which editor is listening for keyboard shortcuts so with the mouse cursor hovering over the monitor space here if I press the N key it will open the side menu only on the monitor side now if I put the mouse cursor over the graph it controls the graph and controls the graph editor so the mouse cursor determines which area in blender is currently listening for keyboard shortcuts or for certain keyboard shortcuts 
Now I keep going back to the default view and there's a reason for that. When we'll be setting up Blender for video editing, we'll be deleting all of these 3D elements. So I'll do that real quick. To select all of them, I'll press A. Now, A is one of those universal or general keyboard shortcuts. In other words, it works the same in whichever editor you're using it. Now, A stands for select all or deselect. Now, if I press Ctrl Z and bring everything back, if I press A, you'll notice that nothing is selected. If I press A again, everything will get selected. Now, if I select the lamp alone and I press A, it's deselected. If I press A again, everything is selected. So, A stands for select all and deselect. Now, now A will do the same when using the dope sheet editor or when using the notes compositor or when importing footage or images or audio tracks. A stands for deselect all or select all. A is one of those universal keys that will apply just about in any editor that you use it in. That was it for today's video. Remember, this is about Blender's interface. Understanding how you navigate and how you use the interface is a big part in learning how to use Blender or when learning how to use Blender. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, there is a thumbs down option, but we'll click on that.